Do you know coming in tonight that the results should go your way, this would be a few, or was that something you may have been spread over? No, that, that was, uh, no. No, I didn't have that planned. I thought I was going to win this fight. I was going to call it Ryan Bader. Everything was going my way <laughs> until it wasn't. But, uh, I, no, I don't regret it. You know, it was a number one contenders match, and I thought it was a big opportunity, and it was. And um, it's somebody else's turn. What factored into this ultimately? I mean, I know you got tons going on outside the cage, you know, analysts on multiple platforms. Um, it seems like it'll be a very smooth transition for you, but what was kind of the, the general reasons behind you wanting to do this now? Well, you gotta be tough. You gotta be tough in the sport, and I feel like I used all my toughness up. You know, there was some, some positions in there that, that before in my career, I walked right through them. And I didn't mind losing to him in, in his spots, like, you know, some of the stuff on our feet, and those jumping knees and whatnot. But I did mind losing to him in, in my spots. He was on top of me. He, you know, I didn't think he'd be on top of me. I thought I could have scrambled. I could have got up. I used to be tougher. I used to want more. I used to have more grit. And uh, I just felt like maybe I, I fired my last bullet. I didn't have that same grit. And it's uh, time to move on. I don't think anyone could question your toughness after that knee you took in the first round. That was a hard knee. It was. It was very loud. What were you carrying? I mean, were you? How hurt were you? Did you recover? You know, fully going that second round, or how? You know, how sketchy was it at that point? Well, and see, it's funny what you tell yourself in those situations. But I thought there was major opportunity going into the second round. I thought that he was fading. That he, he you know, he really went for everything for the finish in the first round. Um, and maybe I'm right, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, but I thought I can come out, I can win these next two rounds. And I took another one of those knees, and now I'm, I'm underneath again, and uh, it was just a tough spot. It, you know, kind of went from bad to worse. He's very, he's very hard to deal with on his feet. Um, so it, it was just one of those matches, it was very tough, but uh, somewhere in there I think I forgot your question, but uh, the referee said to me when the fight was over, he said, he said, Chandler, I was trying to help you. I said, what took you so long? He said, he said, are you going to retire? I said, Reti I retired three minutes ago. I don't even know why we went to the second round here. So I think when you feel like that, even if it's for a moment, you gotta go. Just last thing for me for now. Um, you know, in my mind, you should have that WEC belt. There's an asterisk there, but we spoke pre-fight about. You know, you said if you don't win a world title, you're not retiring. You're quitting. Uh, can you reflect on that statement now that you know you have walked away? Uh, yeah, I'm quitting. I'm quitting this work. I tried to win the world championship. I worked really hard for a really long time, and uh, it didn't come for me. Hey, Chell. What's up, Phoenix? I, I forgive you for all the things you say about New York. Thank, I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Um, I want to, again, congratulate you for an excellent career. Thank you. you fought anybody and you entertained everybody. When Now looking back, you had talked so much this last coming couple of weeks about you never looked back and had any fun. But to us, you were always so much fun. So when you think about the, the fun aspect of it, even losing tonight, can you say that there were moments going into this that you enjoyed? Well, that's a tremendous compliment. Yeah, I, I have no regrets on my career. Even tonight, you know, if I knew what was going to happen, I'd still walk out there and, and do it. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have any regrets. It was one of those things, you know, kind of like middle school. You had good days and bad. But I only remember the good. I only remember the good days. And uh, that's really how this sport is. I had a great experience here. You know, Scott Coker gave me an opportunity at a time when I really needed an opportunity. And um, you know, I had all sorts of deals with Scott Coker, and some of them we never even wrote down. And he honored his word through the end, and I owed him one more fight, and that was tonight. And I wanted to honor my side of it, too. And I thought I could beat Machida. How will you stay busy? Ah, uh, well, yeah, I got two little maniacs now, and uh, you know, so largely I'll be the chauffeur. They'll decide what they want to do, and uh, I'll get them to and from their events. But uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think I'll probably be a little bit bored, quite frankly. I hate days off. If there's anything I hate, it's a day off, but uh, I, need, I need to find something to fill my time, for sure. My last question for you is that you've always been so great and analytical when it comes to looking at fights. Now that you've been in there with Machida, if you look at Machida and Bader, how do you see that going? Yeah, that's interesting. And don't forget, they already fought once. You know, Machida got the jump on him, but it was largely because Bader charged in. You know, I was rough on Bader leading into this week, but I thought I had something going with him. I, Ryan Bader's a tremendous fighter, and, and I don't think that uh, I need to say he's got two world championships. But... Uh, a fight between them. I hope that Bader fights Machida. You know, he's got two options to go up to heavyweight, but I really think there's a major opportunity to draw and have some excitement there. And I think Machida was up against it tonight a little bit. He's a 185 pounder. He had to move up. He was the number one contender. Now he has moved. I think he was in a really tough spot. He performed well. He should, he should be proud. Chael, Sean Hubbard, how you doing? Of course. Uh, in Madison Square Garden, when you fought tonight, you showed the world a lot of what we already know. You're toughness, your grace and defeat. 
and then you retired. And Madison Square Garden gave you basically a heroic response and basically was like a gas followed by a ovation. How did you feel about how the crowd responded to your announcement, especially considering the fact you've been a legend all this time and now you're going to move on to something new? Well, thank you. That's very sweet. And uh, yeah, they were amazing. Madison Square Garden was amazing. The whole card was amazing, you know, from top to bottom. I like that some of these guys, you know, Aaron Pico. Aaron Pico's a much better fighter than I am. And uh, he's paying his dues. It's just a rough business. It's one of those things. You know, we, the basketball championships just ended. The team that won it lost three games in the last three weeks. If you do that in fighting your bum, you're done. It's over. And uh, it's just something unique about this sport. It's something that's unfair about this sport. That uh, you have so much lag time in between getting to you know dust yourself off and try to do it again. So uh, Madison Square Garden was wonderful, and the and the whole card was. I loved how it ended. I loved the, I loved that we're the greatest fight in Bellator history is Lima versus Rory, and now we're going to see it again. I really like the competitors that we have in the sport, but I think they're a little fewer and far between. And if there was something that I could pass to the locker rooms, it would be to go back to that competitive era. Guys that want to do it, that enjoy the sport, they just want to see who's the best. Along those lines, big deal tonight about co-promotion and promoters working together. You, for so long, were the company man. That's how people perceived you about the UFC, and you came over here the same way. But these com com companies promoting against each other, what do you think of that idea? Is that meaningful for you is the idea of competing in mixed martial arts? What can that do for the sport? The co-promote? Yeah. Oh, Josh, wouldn't that be fun if we could all just start doing something? I mean, they've been doing it for boxing for the longest time, and I, I don't know what's going to be the real holdup for, for MMA. I think that, you know, Coker and Saki Abar really have, have something special here. I hope it continues, but it, I, I'm a huge fan. That's how my career started. That's how my career will end. It's just purely as a fan. And, uh, man, that's fun. I love that parody. I assume you're the same way, right? It's great parody. Yeah, I want to see the best. Thank you. Chill, just one more from you. You mentioned uh, the, the analyst role, fatherhood, but any possibility of you resuming your political career? Oh, maybe. You know, I have a lot of fantasies. I have also, and that is that is a fantasy of mine. But uh, no, for now, you know, I'm starting to promote some grappling events and having some fun with that. And uh, uh, but I need a minute. I mean, this is hard for me. I mean, this is a sport and a game, and I was very fortunate to to play a game. Uh, as an adult, games for are for kids in large part. I was very fortunate, and uh, but I don't feel that right now. I feel sorry for myself. I it's hard. It's a hard night for me. Putting on my game face, but this is a hard night for me. I thought I would beat Machida. I wanted to beat Machida for for Randy and Dan and you know these guys that I looked up to. And uh, I'll tell you, he was so elusive. He keeps so much space, and then he closes it so fast. Hard fight. It's a hard fight. Hey, Jill. It's your last. Thank you. Oh, hey, Brad. Congratulations on a, on a great you. career. What was the experience like having your kids in the arena today? It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I believe Father's Day is Sunday. I, I didn't even know that I've been so in, enveloped in myself. But um, it's very fun that we're going to go out to uh, London to call the Bellator next weekend. So we're all going as a family. The grandparents and my wife, all. I think there's seven or eight of us in the crew. Uh, but yeah, it was fun having them there. You know, it's also a little bit nerve-wracking because... They haven't seen it, you know, when dad's in a fight in a little bit cage, half naked in New York City. It's there's some there's some discussions you gotta have, right? There's still a maturity to this. I can't I understand it, but I can't just expect them to. We gotta we gotta talk a little bit. Yeah, I mean what are some of the bullet points that you explained to them before they came and, and watched tonight? Well, well a lot of it happened after the fight. My son was reminding me that I lost, that Machida was on top of you, Dad, punching you. He said he was very scared. So, well son, it's, it's a two man sport. We we can't just give it and not be not be willing to take it. We, we tip our hat, walk away, we come back again. So one more question for you, and I apologize if this is a difficult one, but you wrote that you know great piece on ESPN, and you're talking about how you made that promise to your father. And I'm just wondering if, if you could have a conversation with your dad right now, what do you think he'd say to you? I just tell him I tried. Chael, uh, you had a legendary career. Looking back, uh, what do you think is your favorite moment, if, if, if any? Well, uh, let's see. I had a lot of fun uh, in the build-up to Anderson Silva. Uh, I had a lot of fun tonight. I had a lot of fun coming to New York and, and doing this. Um, favorite moment would be really tough. It, actually, my favorite moment would have been as a fan. You know, it was uh, the night Randy Couture beat Tim Sylvia. I'd already looked up the hospital in Vegas so I could send Randy flowers. I was sure that where he was going to be. And he put the big guy down in about nine seconds and stayed on him for the next 24 and a half minutes. And... Uh, that was probably one of the more memorable moments for me.